Welcome to episode four of the tutorial series on value investing security analysis with Python. Now today I'm going to cover um, still kind of the setup stuff, which is actually getting the data and parsing it into the Jupyter Notebook data frame stuff. Anyway, before I get started, I forgot to mention the previous episode. Uh, so if you were following along and we're doing the setup stuff, you notice that I mentioned that you're going to have to import pandas and um, you know run pandas data frame on it. Now, problem is some of you might not have pandas installed because this is your first time installing anything Python related. So if that's the case, you might have gotten this thing called module not found error. Uh, so that means pandas is not installed if you get that for specific, specifically for pandas. Now going forward, if you get module not found error for any library that we use, that means that you could repeat the same solution for the other libraries, which is to run conda install. Now, if you installed Jupyter Notebook using the tutorial series that I, you know, I think it's episode two, I believe, uh, that means you have conda package manager installed. I recommend using that as opposed to pip install, which is what people normally do. Uh, right here, you see pip install pandas. Uh, the reason being that uh, pip has uh, version problems later down the road when you start having lots and lots of stuff on your system. So I recommend just using conda install, whatever it is. Here, XYZ is panda. So, you know, in this case, I would run, right? You can't just run conda install because that's a command line. It's a command line thing. So what you have to do is exclamation conda install pandas. Now, when you have start doing plotting and we start doing other library, one of it's called Plotly, um, you know, conda doesn't install it. So there are packages that conda doesn't work with. And that's the case you default back to pip install, you know, whatever the module is, but I would always recommend try using conda install first. Okay. okay. All right, let's get started. So um, financial information, where do you get it? Well, the traditional one, I think that's the one that I mentioned before is uh, this thing called Edgar. Um, there's a member by the name of, let me see if I can find his name by the name of Lucky Duck or something. Um, one second. All right, sorry about that guys. I try to load up um, Reddit, but um, I don't know, it won't load. So it's like the server's busy or something. Anyway, so there's a member, Reddit name Duck Sauce. Cool name, by the way. Uh, so he mentioned that Edgar has this thing called interactive data. Um, so if you guys come over to sec.gov, right? And then you type in NVDA, uh, let's see. So 10Q or 10K, any of those? Click on that, and I'm gonna try to zoom in. Okay, I think it's pretty good now. Uh, if you type in interactive data, has this uh, has everything formatted for you? I didn't I didn't know that. So if you type go to in financial statements, um, let's say income statement, it has this stuff. Um, it's already formatted for you. It's pretty cool. You can actually read this into a pandas HTML. Uh, as a table problem is it doesn't they don't give you like a whole bunch of historical information But this is still pretty cool to have I didn't really know about this before so thank you doc sauce. I appreciate that Okay, so now let's talk about getting data. So as mentioned before right uh, I People the way normally did you know the fundamental analysis stuff was they would actually download the file. Let's go. Let's go to Nvidia again right they would just like Go through, I mean, this really, really long, painful, where, where is this? Oh, sorry, I was putting the wrong thing. Like this really long, like, list of stuff that you got to go through. And, and, you know, you got to not only do this, and you got to look for the previous years, right? And then you kind of like compile it and then stick it to Excel and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, man, this is too much work. I mean, just to get numbers is just ridiculous. So, Symfin. Uh, so a disclaimer about Symfin or any other web stuff that I use. So they didn't pay me to make this tutorial. The reason why I like it is because they done a good job, and um, you know, just let them let people know. Um, as with anything on the web, you know, things kind of go up and down. Um, you know, some companies go out of business. A lot of internet companies go out of business really quick. And of course, I don't know if their model is going to change. Start charging information. Start charging money for this information because they did make it really nice and clean. So, you know, you're a data analyst, right? I mean, you were, we're trying to find value, right? So you do a lot of analysis. So you gotta be nimble with what you use, right? You have to be resourceful. Can't be just relying on one thing. I mean, who knows? Like even Symfin, they might be wrong in some areas. So you might wanna be, 
you might want to double check, right? Like you make sure that the data you have is accurate and valid. Remember, garbage in, garbage out. I'm not saying Symfin is giving you garbage data. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that there might be error, so you know it's up to you. I mean, it is your money, right? You're investing your money, so might want to um, check data with official sources, make sure that this data is accurate. But for our tutorial series, right, we're trying to kind of expedite the process. I mean, that's why we're using Python anyway, right? So, all right, anyway, let's kind of uh, dig into it. So you go to Symfin, you sign up, you register, okay? And then uh, I'm gonna look up NVIDIA, whoops, NVDI. So NVIDIA, so now this loads up this nice pretty chart. So if you come to the data selection, uh, you notice a couple of things. Um, so you can actually download the reports into quarterly or yearly statements. And obviously you can pick the ending year. And if you do the, um, the sorry, the quarterly, yeah, you can actually, you can tell them where, when you wanted to end the quarter at. And the first, for the first anal analysis, we're gonna do quarterly. So let's do quarterly. Uh, starting with 2018, ending quarter, this is the second quarter, uh, as a time of this recording anyway. And we want to look at the past, I don't know, let's say 16 quarters or something, right? That's four years, uh, consecutive periods. So you can see that this report will actually generate from Q315 all the way to, oh, Q218 is not released for NVIDIA yet, so go to first quarter. You see that, okay, now they have from, from that to Q215 to Q118. So for, is that 12? For some reason it looks like 12. But anyway, you get the idea. Um, say okay, and then you download the file. Now, a couple of uh, issues when you, okay, by the way, it's gonna ask you, do you wanna split it up or you wanna just download as one file, just download the whole thing and you don't have to customize. I mean, you can do exclude and stuff, but you can do that with Pandas, so no biggie. Download the file. Now, the first thing you'll notice you have to do is actually, um, you have to move this to the folder where your uh, folder is, wherever your Python notebook is, right? And rename this file because data is like very not intuitive, right? So you might want to name this like NVDA qu quarterly um, quarterly report or something. Ah, just, just call it Q. Q is fine. And then uh, so you go to your Jupyter Notebook and you can do, sorry about that, that was, so you say import pandas as pd, um, and then you run that, make sure it's okay, uh, df equals pd dot read excel, and the name of the file that we had was nvda q, nvda underscore q dot xls. Now, if you run this, you'll notice you get this weird, strange error. That's because, I don't know why, but Symfony gives some kind of an odd um, format. So what you wanna do is you wanna just open it up, right? And then if just ask you if you wanna enable edit, okay, enable edit. And then you just file, oh, whoops, file, and then just to save. Just override the file. For some reason, this works. It's just a little trick. So if you go back, and then rerun that line again, it will work. So now if you print on DF, it note, you notice that it does this pretty formatting. So just that little thing that you have, one little step. I will try to figure out what it is. I'll talk to uh, Symfony people to see if, oh, whoops, sorry about that. See if that's, a, that's an issue. All right, sorry for uh, just, con just sort of a repetitive pauses and re-records. The reason being that it's uh, I'm using OBS and the software is really kind of painful to work with Excel. Uh, so I had to move the Excel sheet to a Google Drive. So anyway, um, so now we have to be able to parse the profit and loss statement, balance sheet, as well as a cash flow statement. Um, so what we're gonna do is, the, this is the algorithm. This is what we're gonna find. So you notice that if you, we actually read the whole thing to data frame. So now this data frame thinks that this column called data provided by Symfin is actually a column name, but that's not the column name obviously, right? Um, so we wanted to be, but we can actually exploit that. We can say, hey, where in the column is the word profit and loss statement and balance sheet and 
the cash flow statement found in. So the algorithm is we're going to find the row that has this profit and loss statement, right? We're going to go one down and uh, one across. And we're going to go all the way down to the row that has the word balance sheet, right? And we're going to go two up. So in effect, so we're going to go like this, right? So that's what we want. So the way we're going to do that is by saying, I'll make sure the DF is still running, okay? Uh, is as follows. So we have to be able to find the location of the row that has the word data provided by, sorry, the column, uh, the column with the name data provided by Symfin, we, where in that column is a row profit and loss statement. So the way you do that is, uh, so you can say df.loc, right, the location of df, I'm just going to copy this um, in string, provided Symfin equals, uh, let's see, that, whoops, right, so if you do that, you'll notice that it gives you the whole entire row. I mean, we don't want that. We just want to be able to say, we know that it's in the first element, obviously. So we can just say dot index of the zeroth, right? So if you say that's one. So that means, um, so basically, why does it give you one? So, well, if you look over here, right? So we drop, so if you look at this whole thing, right? We drop this row, right? And now this is a column, so these first two don't count. So this one got dropped, two got dropped, one is a column header. So this is the first, um, uh, so it's, it's a third, so you subtract two, right? So the two rows disappeared, right? One and two disappeared. So it's three minus two, that's how I got one, right? So we can actually reference that as index that P of the profit and loss, and then you can just print index pl and then that's that now the other two are same so i'm not gonna type it out i'm just gonna copy paste uh, same thing where in the row is the word cash flow statement as well as the balance sheet where is it located so it's the same thing it's almost identical um df log df you know provide this column equals that and then get this or that. it's the same thing so you can print index cf uh print index bs if you press enter notice it's 54 and 19 right that's because if you come over here balance sheet is at the 21st row and remember um we subtracted two the two rows that disappeared so 21 minus 2 is 19 and 56 same thing 56 minus 2 is 54. so now we know the row numbers of uh where we can find those things so we're gonna now be able to extract df uh, PL profit loss statement equals DF dot iloc. Okay, um, this is the index location, right? DF iloc is basically by the number. So you can say, let's start from from here, right? We found that to be to be here, right? So we start from here, well, here, sorry, here, all the way to here to where balance sheet is. But you got to subtract one because there's like this empty row here. So you can say from index PL all the way up to index BS, uh, whoops, BS. But like I said, if you do that, right, you get everything all the way up to this, um, where is it? Up to this thing, right? So you don't want that. So you wanna say up to minus one. So now you get rid of, oh, so it should be minus two. Sorry about that. Minus two. Right, so all the way up to here, minus two. Sorry, there's two rows, so it's one, two. I'm sorry, it's uh, because it's non-inclusive, so it should be non -inclusive. so minus two. Sorry about that. Um, anyway. So if you do that, okay, now we we have that. But notice that this column has still this data provided by Symfin. We don't want that. So what you can get rid of that is say comma, one colon, and that, that column is now gone. Now, we still have these funny rows. Yeah, I don't think we do. Okay, good. Now, question though is that, 
Um, we can't reference these columns by unnamed two, unnamed three, right? That makes no sense. I mean, Q2, Q315, Q415, those should be the columns, not, not those, right? So we can actually say that by saying dfpl.columns equals dfpl.iloc0, and that will, if you print it, it will make those things into columns, right? As it should be. So anyway, now you have this column of this random numbers. We don't want that. So what we can get rid of it is by actually setting the index. Say df.pl, whoops, pl dot set index. Now um, this is the column name, even though it's, it's wrong now, but I'll explain later, but we can use that for now. Set index in million USD. You can say in place equals true because this has the same issue with this actually returning a value, but instead of returning a value, say, hey, please overwrite the values. If you do that, you say DFPL, you'll notice that it's now nice and pretty, right? Okay, um, do we have any other NNA, NANs? Now, it's hard, you can't analyze NAN values. I mean, it's, it's not a number, right? I mean, they just show you that it's not a number, but I mean, when you do numerical analysis, it won't work on these NAN values. So the way you can get, get rid of it is by doing df underscore pl dot fill na um, of the zeroth whoops df pl dot fill na and fill all the basically if you say fill na that means replace these nan values but with what I want to replace it with zero and also have to do in place equals true otherwise it will Fill it and return a value, but not change the DFPL. So you have to say in place equals true. And then if you do that, now when you run the DF.PL, after you filled with an A, you'll notice that all the NAND values right here from total, total income expense, uh, where is it? Total income expense. Oh, here right now it's become zero, right? So now it's nice and pretty. All right, anyway, um, this video has been a little bit long for me personally because I've had so many technical issues. Um, the cash flow statement and balance sheet is relatively the same, so I'm going to save that for the next episode. But if you can't figure it out, I mean, it's fairly simple. It's almost the same algorithm. I'll check this on GitHub. You guys can download it and play with yourself. But um, anyway, thanks for watching. I'm going to, the next episode, it's going to be fairly uh, fast. Uh, repetition of the first of the first uh, statement that we've done for the cash flow and balance sheet it's going to be the same thing just looking at indexes splicing and everything and then we can actually start doing analysis anyway if you have any questions comments concerns please leave it in the comments below if it's the first time watching it i apologize for so many technical mishaps um i try to make it not so glitchy next time um and make sure to thumb up subscribe and i'll see you later bye-bye